Okay, so I got asked a question by a subscriber the other day about this specific website and a few things that I found interesting that I wanna show you. So it is a basic HTML site, but I wanted to demonstrate how it can, the data can be in certain different ways, even though the product pages look very similar. So look at this product and look at this one. They're basically the same product page. However, if you look at the URLs, they are very different. And also the main thing that was also very different was the information that came in this specifications table. So we can see here, you have all this information and it's the same here, except if we look at it closely, we have weight, length, composition. And on this one, we have weight, sustainable, length, composition, which means if you wanted some info from out of here, you can't actually just index the table. So if I show you the actual uh, table in the uh, expect element, you'll see that it is uh, basically just a bare ta table with the body and rows, etc., etc. So we needed to find a solution to be able to get this information from this table into a Python dictionary where this is the key and this is the value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, actually run through the passing of the data that I've got here. Um, this is the script that I've got so far. So I decided to use Request Some Beautiful Soup for this. I have set my base URL here. And I've decided that because of the way that the URLs are, I'm going to pass in a tuple into my extract function to get the HTML data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the second part of the URL for the product. And also I'm going to give it uh, these two bits of information that I've stipulated that I've put in so I know that they kind of match the product here. So you can see this one's DMC and it's DMC in there. So this is information that I've decided to put in based on the based on what products we want to get out. So to pass a tuple into an argument, we need to unpack it. And I've just done star args here. And you can see that I'm referencing the URL is going to be the base URL plus and I've opted to put the slash in here so it doesn't go in this part, although you could put it in there if you wanted to. And uh, the uh, second uh, index of the argument, the tuple, which is the URL. We then check to make sure that we get a good status code. If we don't, we raise an error. And then we're returning a tuple as well. So our tuple is going to be returned with the two names that we've chosen and then the actual HTML text that we get out. So what I'll do is I'll just comment out uh, the second two. So our list has only got one in, I'll run it and you'll see that we get the uh, all the HTML from the page and it's off the top of here at the moment. We have the, this is actually a tuple. Um, so that's how we're getting the actual information. So what we wanna do is we want to write a new passing function that's going to actually take this information, this tuple, and we're gonna get the data out that we're after, which is going to be from this table, the specifications, and also the, the price information here. Um, and that should do us. So I'm gonna start by saying, define my function, we're gonna call it pass, and we need to give it the arguments again, because we're gonna be giving it a tuple. From here, we want to actually say that the HTML that we're gonna be working with is the second index of the arguments of the uh, tuple that we're passing. So this is zero, one, and two. Uh, we're giving it that this is going in here. So this means we can actually pass our HTML. We then need to create our soup variable. So soup dot beautiful soup, and then give it the HTML. And it will just use the uh, HTML dot parser here. I hate this. There we go. Okay, so that should work just fine. The first bit of information that we want is actually going to be the price, so that's important. If we look over here, we can see, I'll zoom in a bit on there. There we go. So we have the span class product price amount. And I like the fact that the euro sign is outside of this, which means we can stipulate that on our own terms if we need to. So, so we will do price is equal to soup.select and I'm going to be using select so we can use CSS selectors with beautiful soup uh, and it was a span and this here. Now I'm going to index this as zero and then I'm going to do dot text and what we'll do is we'll just double check that this works in just a minute. Uh, in fact we'll do that now. We'll return out price here and what we'll do is we will print out when we pass the HTML here. So I'm going to run this and we should just get three prices up, I think. Oh, that's because I've given it the wrong thing. There we go. That's a tuple. Thank you. 
There we go. So there's the first one, second one. You can see the, this is the price for each of these pages. So we know that this is working here. So we don't want to actually return that. But what we want to do is we want to create a dictionary and we want to end up with the dictionary that has this piece of information, this one. Maybe you want the URL, but I'm going to exclude that for now. And we're going to say this is the product that we've, we've referenced here. And then we're going to add the price to it. And then we're going to add the contents of the table that we looked at here just down here. So we're going to add all of this and I'll show you how to do the um, key and value. So I'm going to say that my data is equal to, without an indent, thank you, is equal to a blank dictionary. What we want to do now is we're going to add in the key of name and we're going to say that's going to be equal to the first argument that we pass in, uh, the zero index. Then we can add in our key of um, what should I call it? Item, I think. Args one. And then we'll say the data of price. So this is just creating the keys in the dictionary. We're adding it to our blank dictionary is going to be price. Now, obviously, you could put this whole thing here if you wanted to. That would also work. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. So if I return our data out now, what we're going to get, hopefully, is a dictionary for each one that says here's the information that we've given it and here's the price that we found on the web page. Great. So to get this table information then, as I showed you earlier in the video, this is just a blank table. So there is, there's no IDs or anything on these rows. And if you look at the cells, they're basically just two TDs. There's nothing to determine. So we couldn't just go ahead and say, I'll just grab this one with the ID. Now you could index it. But as I showed you, they are in a different order. So if you wanted that information out, you're going to struggle because maybe this piece of information or this one is the first index in one of them products, but not the first index in a different product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually loop through all of the rows and then we're going to select and add the key, which is the first cell and then the value which is the second cell to our dictionary so we get a nice long dictionary out with all of this information for each product regardless of what's there or what uh, order it is in so what we're going to do is we'll say for i'm just going to call this items in in soup.select now we need to find how we're going to select our table now, unfortunately we do have this here P detail table specs, which I've just lost, but seems to be relatively consistent across the whole thing. So we can actually use this and we'll say div and it's an ID. So we need to use a hash symbol there, hashtag, and we'll put that in there. We also want to then say, give us all of the TR tags that are under this one here. So this is basically saying, find this and then find me all of the TR tags the table rows, which are within this div. So we can skip going through just the table on the body. Now I'm referencing it with this div here because it has something to work with. And I think this is going to be more specific. Although if in other cases, you might be able to just go ahead and find the table on the page or, but there's more likely to be multiple tables on a page than there are specific divs with specific names like this one, which is detailed table spec. So I think that's going to be fairly safe. Now we have our for loop, we can actually reference each of the table cells that are underneath these rows. And we can do that by saying item dot select because we're using our item here. And we can say the TD like this. So TD. So if I print this now, item, should we have this item, please? Item, there we go. And what I'll do is I'll just remove those two for the moment. Let's run this. And you'll see that we do get, each time we loop through, we have all of the contents, each of the uh, row of the tables, each cell. So you see we have weight and we have them in a list. So that means that we can actually index this list and add it to the dictionary as we go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say our data and then we'll say, we need data please, let's get rid of this, it's a bit easier to see. Data and then we want the key is going to be, not that, like this, but we want to actually index this as the first item that comes out of that list that I just showed you and we want the text from it. So that's going to be the key of our dictionary. And we'll say that's going to equal to this again, but the first index. 
So we're saying here's data, this is our key, which I just showed you down below, and this is the value. So I'm gonna save that and we'll run it now and we will get out a nice neat dictionary for each one that I've just stipulated in my list of tuples that has the, uh, the name, the item and the price. This is what we put into the dictionary to start with. And then we looped and then we looped through all of the information on that table and we've pulled out each part. As you can see, it is in a slightly different order. So that's how we can get that information out. Now, if you only wanted certain keys from here, you could then just remove the ones you didn't want or keep the ones that you did from this dictionary uh, to get all that information. So I'm just going to add this to our results list and we'll just finish up here. Results dot append what we're passing like that. And then we'll print out our results again, just so we have our list of dictionaries that we got out from each of the pages. There we go. So hopefully you've got something out of this video. Um, if you have, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much. And if you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to like this one right here. More stuff like this.